so a few of you asked me after my live feed if I can go in more detail about how I transferred this design onto this panel. This is still a work in progress, so don't judge. With this. So I'm going to go over that real quick with you guys, and I hope it helps you. This stuff has been around as long as I've been doing artwork, and that's a very long time. So this is Sorol transfer paper. You can read on the box that it has no wax or grease. It's like a pencil, won't smear, washes out of fabric, which is awesome if you're into quilting. Um, you can paint right over it, uh, and, and it can be used over and over and over and over and over again. It like lasts a very long time. And then um, also it comes in different colors. So there's a graphite version, the white, the blue, the yellow, and the red. This is graphite. This is like um, what a leaded pencil would be like. I will not use this for any of my paintwork. I don't like using it. Um, it can be weird on surfaces. I don't like painting over it. So I stick with these three right here. And the red can stain. So these three are chalk. Well, these four are chalk. This is actual graphite. So it's different than all of these. And then also you can see, you know, um, this I think means it won't be picked up by a copier. And... Uh, you know, they kind of tell you, you know, what they're good for, but this is good for exactly what this is good for and uh, easily seen on dark surfaces, light surfaces, you know, fire out of ceramics. So I didn't even know you can use this on ceramics. I learned something there. So that's cool. Anyway, so it tells you all what it's good for and uh, all this stuff. This can be found online. Um, I buy this. Oh, gosh. I can't remember the last time I bought this. I think I bought it from Dick Blake Art Materials, and then uh, there's plenty of other suppliers that have it also. So, these are the three colors that I use most often, and um, you can see some of the lines on them, but there's a chalk side on one side, and then a not chalk side on the other side. I I'll get into that. So, the blue, you can see it's darker, that's the chalk side. And this is, you know, the regular paper side. And same thing with the white. The white will have... The white is hard to tell because it's just hard to tell. So, anyway. And, like, you can cut them up if you need to cut them up and use them. But you don't really need to cut them up if, you know, if you're not working in tight spaces, leave it on a roll. And then that way you can just keep on using it. So, how this works is that you will take an image... I did a video on this guy if you want to go take a look at the tutorials. Um, so this is going to be the chalk side down on the paper. Put him above the paper. Usually I would tape this all down and everything like that. And I would start tracing with a ballpoint pen. Don't try to use a pencil. So ballpoint pen works the best. It's nice and sharp. So this I prefer to use, you know, if I'm doing a one-off design and or it's a very intricate design where if you see my previous videos, I do electro pouncing for, you know, if I'm doing two sides of a vehicle, I'll electro pounce the pattern. Uh, that way it's less time consuming on my job sites and all that stuff. But, you know, if it's just one-off designs or very detailed work, I use this. But see, so you can see he's there. And the same thing goes for the blue. See, he's, oh, you can't tell. It's there. And then, of course, the white. It's the same thing. See, it's the same thing. So, that is how you would transfer a design. And also, I don't know if you caught in the live feed, sometimes I like taking some of the excess chalk away. Chalk um, can degloss enamel paint that we work with if you're a pinstriper. Um, 
so you got to keep that in mind the more like like we would put talcum powder or baby powder in our paint to flatten it out if you don't want to shine and you got to think about the same thing with this so if you just take the excess away you're going to be fine another good thing about doing the transfer is that if you're working on um, some surfaces that are really slick um, you're not worried about this getting removed if it was pounce uh, pounce chalk like the pounce pattern pounce chalk you know if I did this it can like wipe away and then you don't have your design anymore so you got to keep that in mind this will probably not work on chrome or stainless steel um, that depends on the metal but any painted surface, wood, you know, surfaces, all that kind of stuff will work. I've used this in other art forms. I've used it in acrylic painting, um, a little bit of oil painting, and um, all that jazz. So that is your lesson about Sorol paper. Hope you guys liked it.